I've made several videos in the past before teaching you guys how to get faster render times in Blender. Something I often say in those videos is that the best thing you can do to get faster render times is to make sure you're using appropriate hardware. That obviously prompts people to ask the question, what sort of computer do I need for Blender? In general, I get asked that question all the time on this channel in the comments, and if you check out the Facebook groups and the Reddit subreddits dedicated to Blender, you see the same question being asked time and time again there too. And look guys, I get it. Trying to pick out hardware that you can use for creative apps can be a real minefield. You get all these questions like how much RAM do I need? Do I need an SSD or just a regular hard drive? Do I need a 4K display? And that's made even harder by the fact that different creative suites leverage hardware in different ways. So when Nvidia got in touch with me to say that they have a platform aimed specifically at creatives like you and me, I knew that I had to take a look. The program's called Nvidia Studio. In a nutshell, Nvidia Studio is an initiative where Nvidia works directly with their system partners to design computers that are aimed at creative users. Whenever you see the NVIDIA Studio badge on a laptop or a desktop computer, it means that it's been certified by NVIDIA to give you excellent performance in programs like Blender, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve and Substance Banner. Check out the link in the description to view Scan's range of NVIDIA Studio hardware. Scan are one of the largest computer hardware stores selling a range of NVIDIA Studio products. They've got a really strong legacy in professional video and they have a wide range of studio and video hardware that can support your creativity. To test out the power of studio certified computers for myself, Nvidia sent me this Aero 15 laptop from Gigabyte. It comes with an i7 processor, 32GB of RAM, a beautiful 4K AMOLED screen, a terabyte of blazing fast storage and an RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics card. As some of you may know, the RTX 2080 is the flagship of Nvidia's 2000 series GPU. The Max-Q variant is a laptop specific SKU designed to give you fantastic rendering performance while also being really quiet, cool and low on power use. The Aero 15 has a few really nice little touches too. I really appreciate the fingerprint scanner, the fact it has two USB-C connections and a dedicated SD card reader which comes in really handy when I'm offloading footage from my camera. Because this is a NVIDIA Studio laptop, that means NVIDIA's work directly with the manufacturer to make sure it's got the best performance possible for creative tasks. NVIDIA takes each one of these laptops or desktops away and they put it through a battery of laboratory tests to make sure that it has the right mix of components to get the best performance. Every studio device has a few things in common. They all have really beefy processors and GPUs, they all have loads of RAM and they all have a really nice, high quality display. And it isn't just about the cutting edge hardware either. Nvidia has a whole host of different software solutions designed to make your life as a creative easier. For instance, most creators are probably using the standard game drivers on their GPUs. The problem is that those drivers have been used to maximize the frame rate that you get out of games instead of being stable in creative applications. So Nvidia's went and made a whole range of their own drivers just for creative apps called the studio drivers. They give you much more stable performance which means less time crashing, more time creating and less moments like this. No, 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 no. Oh, it's crashed again. I swear to God, guys, I had a full head of hair three years ago when I picked up Blender. Crashing did this to me. Obviously, all of Nvidia's studio devices come with the studio drivers straight out of the box, but don't worry, you still get fantastic performance in games, so if you want to play a little bit of Fortnite between renders, that's perfectly fine. And you can always switch over to the regular game drivers in the GeForce Experience app. It's like a touch of a button and it's done. Programs like Blender also have access to the NVIDIA Optics API, which allows Blender to use the dedicated ray tracing cores built into RTX graphics cards. That means that you get much faster renders without any loss of quality. I've been using Optics for a month or two now, and it's so much faster than any other type of rendering, I honestly don't think I'll ever go back. Optic support in Blender was experimental until recently, which meant that a few specialist nodes like ambient occlusion didn't work. But in the new version of Blender that comes out in a few weeks, Optics is fully supported so you can use all of the features set of Blender and get really nice fast renders. Blender can also access the AI specialist cores called Tensor Cores in NVIDIA GPUs that allow you to denoise scenes with fantastic results. 
Not only does that mean that you can use fewer samples and therefore get faster renders, but the denoiser works in the viewport too. If you look at this old scene here, it's very very noisy and once I hit that denoise button, I can see what I'm doing on the fly and make changes without having to do loads of different test renders. Some of you may remember this sculpt that I made a few months back. The high resolution version of this artwork needed loads of samples because denoising just didn't look very good with the old denoiser. It took something like 40 minutes to render out a single frame on my old desktop CPU. I've been waiting to make a smaller resolution turntable version of this for my social media, so I loaded this file up on the studio laptop to see what this thing can do. So I'm rendering this out at 2000 pixels squared with 100 samples and I'm using the optics denoiser this time. On the CPU the Aero 15 took 235 seconds. With CUDA enabled on the graphics card that was cut in half to just 112 seconds and if I enabled the optics rendering that went all the way down to just 81 seconds. That render time was low enough that I could easily render out this nice little turntable animation in just a few hours. Other benchmarks show the same pattern. The BMW benchmark took 483 seconds on the CPU. Switching over to the graphics card on CUDA rendering took 83 seconds and it took just 40 seconds using optics. For reference, the PC that I was using until April took 13 minutes to complete the BMW render, so the fact that we can render this scene out now on a laptop in well under a minute is pretty insane. So with that out the way I switched over to the classroom benchmark, that took 845 seconds on the CPU. With CUDA rendering on the graphics card it took 241 seconds and the optics rendering did it in just 131 seconds. Once again for reference my old PC used to take 2676 seconds to complete the same classroom scene. So that's 2 minutes on a laptop, 45 minutes on a desktop. Real time EV performance was equally impressive. I loaded up this old Jurassic Park scene that I made last year. It's a pretty heavy scene with loads of volumetrics and almost every single mesh is animated. The viewport performance here was still really smooth and the render times were nice and quick too. It was about 3 seconds per frame, so this whole animation took less than 5 minutes to render out. I was also really curious how a laptop like this could handle really large sculpts, so I went back in with that orc model that I had up earlier on and I started sculpting in a few little fine details. The viewport performance remained really solid and the overall experience was fantastic considering this thing has 2.5 million verts with the multi-red modifier enabled. I could move around just little parts of the mesh or make big changes at once and it was completely fine. Ok so that's Blender out of the way but what about other creative apps? I launched Photoshop to see how well this thing could handle really high resolution images and honestly it had no problem at all handling even massive complex files. I opened up this huge 8K background and I was painting in details with a brush that's several times larger than a HD image and it had absolutely no stuttering or any issues whatsoever. The liquefied tool which is notorious for being really slow sometimes at large resolutions also didn't have any problems, it really didn't miss a beat. I was doing adjustments with curves, I was changing different layers and all sorts of things and every test that I threw at this was completely fine. Being able to paint on really massive images like this on a laptop is absolutely bonkers. I've also been using this laptop to do loads of video editing recently including the video you're watching right now and so far it's had absolutely no problems at all. I've been throwing 4K footage at this thing, I've been remapping time. I've been using loads of layers with different transforms, things like that. Everything has worked flawlessly. The viewport's really responsive and the general experience is very nice with quick render times at the end. So the bottom line here guys is that Nvidia Studio devices are going to give you fantastic performance whether you're using Blender or any other creative app. Some vendors like Scan have sections on the website where you can browse all of the studio devices. You can pretty much just pick out a device in your price range and you can guarantee that you'll get excellent performance and the best bang for your buck without leaving anything on the table. Big thank you to Nvidia and Scan for sponsoring this video. I've been working really hard on loads of content lately and that's going to be dropping in the next week or two where I'm making things using this video. Those are going to be some of my best videos guys so make sure you stay tuned for that. Remember to check out the link in the description to find out more about Nvidia Studio devices 
And also leave a comment, let me know what you think about my new ambient light. See you later guys.